the Joe Rogan experience. But again, I'm a responsible grown-up, right? I'm 54 years old, and I know what I'm doing. Um, so when we think about something like cocaine, cocaine, not the bullshit that people sell on the street that's been stepped on. So like when you go to places like Colombia and you go to the source and you get really good cocaine, like Colombia cocaine is about seven dollars a gram, whereas in New York it could be anywhere from sixty to a hundred dollars a gram, um, uh, and not as good as a product in Colombia. So you go to the source countries and you get good stuff. Um, it could be a really good evening with you and your significant other, you know, and um, um, uh, all of these sort of stories of people being paranoid about the cops with cocaine, there are reasons to be paranoid if you're doing something wrong. There, there's, so I get that. I mean, so... You're also worried about being arrested. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. That's what exactly what I'm... That's mm -hmm. exactly what I mean. So there's a reason to... That's a rational sort of thing. Uh, but what's irrational is that we're arresting people for what they put in their bodies. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, agreed wholeheartedly. Yeah. Um, and I always point out that you can go to CVS and buy enough liquor to kill yourself. Absolutely. 24 7 all day long absolutely it's so easy to do absolutely yeah so but when we think about cocaine and why it's illegal yeah um uh, cocaine came to the united states uh in the pop for the popular masses in the late 1800s and coca-cola this guy john pendleton i think his name was he put it in coca-cola well this product a coca wine uh and he was out of atlanta and uh, he put it in coca wine in 1894. The next year, Atlanta banned alcohol. So before prohibition, alcohol was banned in Atlanta. Pro prohibition didn't just Atlanta, just Atlanta. I mean, cities. Interesting. Various cities banned this. Um, prohibition happened in 1920 uh, nationwide. Um, so since they banned. Um, alcohol in Atlanta he had to come up with a new formulation and he add, and so what he did was took the alcohol out added carbonated water and sugar then you have Coca-Cola what that, that's this is how wow. Coca-Cola this is how Coca-Cola was made and he put it in these soda fountains so he sold that pharmacies at these soda fountains and they were for whites only so cocaine was you was typically available only to white people at that time but then in i guess maybe 1899 early 1900s coca-cola began bottling the products now it's available to black people and now you start to get these the connection between violence and cocaine use among black people and this sort of narrative grew and grew um, to the point where we banned cocaine effectively in 1914, largely because of its association with black people using the drug. A similar thing happened with opium and the Chinese. That's the real reason that those drugs are banned, not because of pharmacology. You know what mm, I'm saying? Yeah. Now, that's not to say that people can't get in trouble with these drugs, because people do. You know, Just like, like they can get in trouble with alcohol. That's right. That's right. But the only stories that we tell about cocaine uh, is the one where people get in trouble. Yes. But I got to tell you, uh, recently I watched... Uh, uh, Pete Davidson's movie. What was that? The, the King of Staten Island, yes. I think it is. It was the first time in a popular movie where um, the, a hero uh, used cocaine and he was still a hero. So you might remember the scene where Steve Buscemi and uh, I think Bill Burr, they were talking about. I didn't see the movie. Uh, oh, it, it was a great scene. I heard it was great. A great scene where they were talking about. Um, Pete's dad and Pete's dad um, had used cocaine previously and um, Pete didn't know this and but it was just a matter of fact the guy used cocaine he liked his cocaine but he was still a good guy he was a fireman he was a hero he was all of these things and they didn't besmirch him for using cocaine it's one of the few times that you see in popular culture that somebody uses something like cocaine and they're not besmirch 
they don't have they don't go down this path of becoming an addict and losing all of their possessions because of the drug yeah and so i thought like they're doing something here that's different and then that was really that was a great scene yeah most of the stereotypes about cocaine in hollywood are you know people using people seedy people people that have no compassion for each other ruthlessly ambitious people doing coke and just all full of themselves and high on themselves and i'm gonna take over this fucking town (laughs) Ah! that's what you you hear and see you know yeah um yeah i hope that changes man i know yeah well i mean uh I, i would try it with you yeah i would try it yeah, all right. Especially That's... listening to you and knowing you probably get the real shit. Yeah. I just, uh, I avoid things that make me confident. I'm not interested in that. I'm confident enough. I'm plenty confident. I like things that scare me. That's why I like marijuana so much. <laughs> I do. I do. People think I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not. I, I, I like p- the paranoia. I like freaking out because I always come out of it at the other end with some sort of a lesson. Because I think sometimes... Um, we can shield ourselves from things that are we're really worried about or shield ourselves from concerns that we have or even from ruthlessly introspective thoughts that come with uh, high doses of marijuana. And that's the thing that freaks a lot of people out. I find them very beneficial. Some of the best moments I've had personally are after some of the wildest trips where I was like, boy, this is rough. And that, but at the end, when it's over, I come out feeling so much better. I, I feel you. I mean, that's great. I mean, because, you know, um, that's useful. Uh, you feel like you're a better person. That's cool. But sometimes you just want to be euphoric and yeah. just enjoy your significant other. Sure. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So and, and so cocaine or some other drug uh, might be useful for that. And so it's not like you have to have only that experience that frightens you and you become a better person at, yeah. at the end of it. Um, I'm all for that. That's fine. You got that. Um, uh, but I would just say broaden your repertoire. That's it. The problem is like, get if it was legal, it'd be great. Well, like you could get pure cocaine and you knew what you were getting but if you're getting cocaine in austin texas you're probably getting it from some sketchy dude yeah Yeah. who uh is also selling a bunch of other shit and yeah i mean i'm imagining i've never tried to buy it yeah but you know um two things here um we got the technology to put on the streets where people can um just submit small samples of their drug 10 milligrams which is nothing and then they get a chem they get a readout of the chemical composition of their drug right we have that technology if the public would put pressure on their officials to make sure that it's available to people where they can submit their drugs small samples of their drugs free and anonymously uh and then they get this readout the problem is it's so taboo like, if you even admit that you do cocaine, people are like, oh, look at this guy, ready to ruin his fucking life, barely hanging on over there, Carl. Look well, at you, well, doing see, cocaine. This is why, in the book, I admit my heroin use, my cocaine use, all of my drug use. So I'm trying to change that image because I have met people all around the world, some politicians and so forth, and got high with these people. Uh, of course, I won't say who they are, uh, but... Um, the vast majority of people who use these drugs are people who are responsible, take care of their families, they care about their communities, they do all this sort of stuff. But Hollywood and the media and the, the mythology is so powerful in showing only this one image. Yes. Um, and I'm trying to really disrupt that because it's, it's so harmful to so many people. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.